Hello, it's Sebastian Danicic again. Now here is week three of the course. This week we're going to learn about recursion. Recursion is quite simple. Recursion means when a function calls itself. Now a good way to learn about recursion is to try a new programming language called Hope. And the best way to learn Hope is simply to log on to Igor. So first you log on to Igor, and then you just type hope. And then you get this um, prompt here, this greater than sign followed by a uh, colon. Then you know you're in hope. And hope's quite simple. You can start typing in expressions followed by a semicolon. And it gives us back the result, and it tells you what type it is. So it tells you that 1 is a number. So we can do more complicated things. 1 plus 1 is a number. It's the number two. Um, we can we can do characters. Uh, there we go. A is a character. You can do true. True is a boolean. So let's try true and false. That's false. True or false. That's true. Uh, we can type in lists, I think. So it knows about lists of numbers. What about this? Um, um, that's a list each of whose elements is a list of characters. That's because if we just do a string like this here, it thinks of that as a list of characters. So here we have a list of lists of characters. So we could have uh, true, false, true. So for example, what's that going to be? Well that's a list of booleans, because true, false and true are lists of booleans. So we could actually do things like true <coughs> and false, true, uh, false, or true. So there we've got a list of three elements. The first is true and false, which is false. The second one's true, and the second, third one is false or true, which is true. So that should say false, true, true false, true, true, and it tells us it's a list of booleans. So hope's a good way of checking the types of things. So we can do pairs of things like one or one, two. That says it's a num cross num. This sharp sign is like a Cartesian product. So we could do uh, one, true, blah. So what's that going to be? It's a num, a number, and a boolean and a string and a list of char. A number, a boolean and a list of char. So I encourage you to play around with hope typing in simple expressions like that. Now the reason, um, the main reason why we're learning hope or playing with hope at least is to learn about recursion. So here is an example of a recursive function <coughs> so if we look out the if we look up the first line here it says factorial is a function <coughs> which takes a number and returns a number so in other words we say factorial of 5 and that gives us back a number or factorial of 79 and it gives us back a number so here we have two rules for defining factorial we have factorial of 0 is 1 that's the base case and factorial of n plus 1 is n plus 1 times the, fa times the factorial of n. Oh, there's a mis misprint there. So let me type this one incorrectly, uh, and this is what it would be like. So we'll say factorial is a function from numbers to numbers. Oh, it's already declared. 
why is that oh because I did it twice okay so I, I say factorial factorial of 0 is defined to be 1 notice this symbol here for is defined to be so it's like a less looks like less than or equal I think of it as an arrow going that going from from right to left so it says the factorial of naught is 1 and then the factorial of n plus 1 is defined to be n plus 1 times the factorial of n so now we've got two rules for factorial we can now try it out so we can say factorial of naught semicolon and it tells us the answer is 1 well, that's not surprising. Let's just use this rule here. So what happens if we work out factorial of 1? Well, which rule is that going to use? It's, well, it can't use the first rule because that's only defined for factorial of naught. So it must be using this rule here, which says factorial of n plus 1. Well, that matches this one with n equal to 0. So it'll be 1 times the factorial of naught. 1 times the factorial of naught. Well, the factorial of naught is 1, so it should be 1 times 1 which is 1 so let's try that out so we know that the factorial of 1 is 1 what about the factorial of 2 well that's going to be that'll match the second rule again here with n equal to 1 1 because 1 plus 1 is 2 so that'll be factorial of 2 will be 2 times the factorial of 1 We've alright already worked out that the factorial of one is one, so it'll be two times one, which is two. So let's try that. Factorial of two is two. Now let's try the next one, which is factorial of three. Um that comes out to be six. Why is that? Because again this will match the second rule with n equal to two, because two plus one is three. So it'll be 3 times the factorial of 2. We've worked out the factorial of 2 is 2, so it'll be 3 times 2, which is 6, etc. So let's try it out with a different one, factorial of 10. And that gives us that. So it's working out um, the factorial of 9, which then makes it work out the factorial of 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So that's recursion because the function, or the method, as we call them in Java, calls itself. So um, how do we do something like that in, in, Java, in Java? So here we have... Very similarly, as we did it in Hope, here's the solution in Java. We've got a method called factorial. It takes an int as a parameter, and it returns an int. And we say, if n is equal to naught, return 1, else return n times factorial n minus 1. So that's very similar to the Hope way of doing things. Um, so there are two cases again. If, if it's naught, we return 1. If it's not naught, then it'll be n, which is the parameter, times the factorial of n minus 1. And here, I've just written uh, something so we can call it from the command line. So we're printing out the factorial, so we're calling our method factorial, and then we're taking a number from the command line, converting it to an integer, and passing it to the factorial function. So we take a string from the command line, we convert it to an integer, we pass it to the factorial function, and we print out the result. So um, let's run that. We'd say Java fact 0, for example. And it prints out 1. So let's do Java fact 3. And it printed out 6. Let's try 10. So it worked. It gave the same answers as it did when we did it in Hope, which is good. 
And really, um, you don't have to think there's anything special about recursion. Simply, we have a method, and inside the body of the method, we have a call to the method that we're defining. So we're defining factorial, and inside our method factorial, we have a call of factorial. Now notice we'll always call it with a lower value of the parameter. Here we call, we're starting with n, and we're calling it with n minus 1. So eventually we'll get down to this base case where n is 0, and that'll get us out of the, the loop, if you like. Thanks very much.